Hey, it's the Tony Scott Internet Show. What's going on? How was the weekend? Was the weekend good? Oh, well, the weather was great, right? We got me a haircut on Saturday. First haircut I've had in a while. I think the last time I got a haircut, I was actually I actually had a full time job, and I haven't had that since May. So, so it's my first haircut. I was looking unruly. I was looking. I was scaring small children, so I decided to go in and spend the money. Don't know when the next time I'll have one. I have to have some kind of fundraiser, maybe a Kickstarter, so that I can get a haircut. And that'll probably be like in April. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Man. I feel good today. I don't know why. I, I, I'm glad I feel good today. You know? God let me wake up another day to enjoy. I know why I'm happy. Today's my mom's birthday. Happy birthday to mom. I love you. Man. Mom is everything. You know? I learned so much about my father from my mother after my father passed away but I've learned so much about her and the kind of woman she she is when my father was sick and I've learned a lot about her we spent a lot of time talking about her and her younger days and you know when she was a kid and everything and you know I mean she married my father when she was 15 and when my dad passed away she was 70 <laughs> That's that's a long, that's a lot of stories there, man. And every one of them I cherish. I just think it, it, their stories are great. From the time that my dad's blind cousin Willie uh, caused my mom to have to jump in the ditch to avoid running into him, and she came out the ditch ready to fight. I mean, just tons of tons of great stories, and uh, how my father uh, respected her so much when they were dating that you know for. He insisted they only they only when they did they only dated during the day. They never went out at night, and there was a chaperone always. And that was my father's insistence, you know. So, pretty interesting, pretty interesting stories. We all have interesting family stories. I had someone contact me. I was mentioned earlier that I I did my ancestry. I'm on ancestry.com, and one of my uh, not one of my but somebody who we share. I think we share like a great great grandmother. Uh, and they were sent me a message wondering if I had a picture of her. And I don't. I wish I did. But I, you know, I wish I had pictures of lots of those relatives from back in the day. But uh, I don't. But hopefully, somebody does though, right? It's just a matter of them sharing it. Everybody's got pictures of somebody. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, what's going on? I read this article over the weekend that said 4 out of 10 in Ferguson voters cast ballots. 4 out of 10. That was for me. That was disappointing. I thought it would be at least fifty percent of twenty-four thousand three hundred thirty-four registered voters. Uh, Ten thousand two hundred twenty-two cast ballots in the election last Tuesday. That's a turnout of a little more than forty-two percent, which is really, when you think about, it, probably where it's been in Ferguson is great. But I wanted it to be closer to, at a minimum, I wanted it to be seventy percent, at a minimum. I mean, understand it, it'll never be like 100%. That would be too much to ask for in one shot. But I thought given what happened in Ferguson, that it would be a lot higher. Well, 42% is still pretty impressive, though, when you think about it. Uh, the last mayoral election when James Knowles was elected, the turnout was like 16%. So, uh, you know, and it's never, but before that, it had never topped like 12%. But the 2012 general election, there was like 76, almost 76 and a half percent. So, I mean, you know, it's it just I just thought every, given everything that's happened and how much change is needed and how everybody wants change uh, in a lot of places. But in in Ferguson, it seems to be ground zero for what needs to happen that I thought they would be uh, higher than than 42 percent. But 42 percent is still very high. So I don't know if you've been uh, really paying attention to the New York Daily News uh, did a story about Leslie McSpadden, who was Michael Brown's mother, and uh, how she might be facing a felony, felony armed robbery charges. One of the, uh, the apparently she's accused of leading others to attack and steal money from a group selling justice for Mike Brown merchandise. Now this is alleged. I don't know if this is true or not. I'm just telling you what the New York Daily News is reporting. It's alleged. And if she is charged, it would be felony armed robbery. One of them is her ex-mother-in-law, Pearlie Gordon, who the New York Daily News says was knocked down by the group that 
Leslie McSpadden allegedly led $2,000 in merchandising cash were taken uh, from the group who had the t-shirts and merchandise. Uh, who's leading the investigation? Well, who else would be leading it? The Ferguson Police Department. You see? And th- there, and there, therein lies the problem is that nobody wants to hear from the Ferguson Police Department. The Ferguson Police Department needs to go away. It, literally, it needs to be dissolved. You know, Jennings, Missouri, for those who are not in the St. Louis area, is another suburb of St. Louis County, St. Louis City. It's in St. Louis County. And their police department was dissolved uh, a few years ago because there was just too much racial tension amongst the officers and there was too much corruption going on. And you may not know this, but Darren Wilson was a member of the Jennings Police Department. So I don't think anybody is trusting the Ferguson Police Department to do Leslie McSpadden any favors at all. And what I just told you is alleged. She's not because it's important that I keep saying that because we, she's not she's innocent until proven guilty. And we all know that, that that only applies to certain members of this country. Usually none of them are of color, but I'm going to say it right now. I demand I demand Leslie McSpadden be found. I demand Leslie McSpadden be declared innocent until proven otherwise. That's what I demand. We'll see where it takes us, though. Has your Gmail account been hacked? I saw this on CNN. You are 36 times more likely to get uh, scammed or hacked if your contacts accounts have been hacked. That was actually a study done by Google. You know, on, on average, they say only nine in one million accounts get stolen. But when it happens, if you're one of those nine, man, it can be brutal. It can be brutal. I have I have several Gmail accounts and I don't I don't have my contacts, my regular contacts. I don't I don't share them with Gmail. I don't I just you know how you can like import them. I don't import them. You know I I just don't. I just you know if I'm gonna send somebody a message, I'll t- I'll type out there or cut and paste their email address. But I'm not going to my contacts and click because I just don't I don't trust I don't trust it like that. The, the online mail thing, I just there's something about that. I don't I don't share my contacts. My contacts are too precious. If I have you as a contact, you're too precious for me to uh to to share right and and the thing of these scams that you know happen that people get scammed you know uh, like they work like almost half the time right almost half the time they work and some of them i gotta admit the subject line will entice you i i get that but i have like trained myself to think like if you send me a link and i don't know you and you don't know me but you probably know me more than I know you because I do podcasts and I do vlogs and things like that. So you probably know me. So if I sent you a link, I'm not trying to send you anything that's going to, you know, wreak havoc on your online life. Whereas if you send me something, I don't know that because I literally don't know anything about you. Right. So if you send me a link, I'm probably going to delete it. <laughs> I'm just being, It's almost like I'm better than you, but I'm not. I'm just saying, you know, you know, uh, at the very least, you know of me. I don't even know that about you, but you know, you know me, you, you follow me on Facebook or Twitter or wherever. And so you kind of have an idea of what I put on the internet and things like that, what I post links and stuff like that. But I don't know you like that. So when you send me something, I'm probably not going to be clicking on it. I'm probably going to delete it. You know, that's just, that's just me, you know, but, uh, you should never email your username or password, though. You do know that, right? You should not ever email your username or your password to anyone. Don't text it. Don't do anything like that. You know, your your, your whole thing it can be it can be taken from you in less than three minutes because you give them a head start by doing silly things like using very easy passwords, like password one. You know, or or one, two, three, four, five, six, or something like that. You know, those simple things, you're just asking. That's why all those celebrities got their new pictures taken. Megan Good and all that. And, you know, then they they cried foul. Which, they're, I mean, they were right. That was a foul thing to do. But you can't make it easy for people. You know, my father used to always tell me, there are people in this world you have never met that are just waiting to take advantage of you. Y'all, y'all are not even in the same city. This was before the internet. He would tell me this when I was a kid. 
There are people waiting to take advantage of you that don't even know you exist yet, but they're waiting for you. He said, don't ever forget that. And at the time, when he told me that, I was like four months old. <laughs> but but I was like, what, what does that mean? I wasn't four months old, but I was like, what, what does that mean? He's telling me this. I don't know what that, what does that mean? I don't know what that means. <laughs> so, so I don't know. I also saw on Friday the former Navy SEAL Robert O'Neill, the SEAL Robert O'Neill. He, he said he's the one who fired the kill shot that killed Osama bin Laden four years ago. He's got a book out called No Easy Day. Now, a lot of SEALs are up in arms because they say that he had no right to say that he was the one. Because SEALs don't do it for credit, don't do it to sell books. SEALs do it for honor. And when you do something for honor, it's not important who knows what you did, which I totally get. I understand that. But he's looking for a come up, right? I mean, I, I don't know that much about SEALs, but I do know I'm disappointed in this man because, you know, he's he's uh, in effect. And when you think about it, you know, he, he could be jeopardizing the fellow team members of SEAL Team 6 that went in and, and got Osama bin Laden. Because if you've got the name of one, what makes you think you can't track down the names of the other members of the team? You know? He did say, I saw him on with Anderson Cooper and, you know, they, they, well, he wasn't on, but the person who interviewed him was on. And it almost seemed like he was, he wasn't really, he wasn't telling the story from the point of view of, how do you put this? He actually was telling the story more as he was bragging. Yeah, I'm the one. I'm the one. And, you know, he's throwing F-bombs and all that kind of stuff, trying to show off to the female reporter he was telling the story to. That's the impression that I got. And he did say that he, he he didn't think that he would survive this mission. They all kind of thought this was going to be it. But they were going because of honor for the country. And they get it done. And now, you know, he's telling the world, yeah, I'm the one. I'm the one that double tapped uh, Osama bin Laden, you know, which I just think it's it's uh, something sad about that. Something sad, very sad about that. I don't know. So uh, what else is going on in the world? This uh, woman is in jail. Her husband came to serve her divorce papers and when he went, he took his new girlfriend with him. So the the uh the soon to be ex wife uh went in went in and laid hands on everybody and she's looking at assault charges because she took her anger out on her husband's new girlfriend. Sharona Coach Barnes is being held on thirty thousand dollars bond. Police say that uh, Sharona was so angry she even pulled a gun on the other woman. She lost her cool. This happened in East Memphis. Uh, Derrico Barnes served her with divorce papers. Since when do you serve your spouse with divorce papers? How does that, isn't there like a process server? That, that's another person's job, isn't he? Anyway, he went to do this and he brought his new girlfriend, Sharita Evans, along. One neighbor, I know, why would a neighbor even comment? I don't see anything wrong with that. They're not together. He just letting his woman know he, there's nothing to it. There's nothing to her. And another neighbor says, yeah, that woman should have got beat. It was disrespectful. I don't know if disrespectful is the right word, but you don't. I'll say, I don't know anybody in this situation, but I'll say this. I believe strongly that that man did that because he wanted to see two women fight over him. I think he did. I mean, why, why, why would you do something like that? When I divorced my first wife, it was very amicable, very peaceful. But for a while, I, I, I kept my, 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 my ex-wife and my current wife, I kept them separated. I kept them, I mean, one, they lived out of town, lived out of state. But I kept that whole thing, you know, at arm's length because I just, it just didn't feel right, you know. And I, I think that was a good thing, you know. <laughs> but that's just, that's just kind of stupid. Why would you take your girlfriend with you to give your estranged wife divorce papers? To me, you're just asking for trouble. You're asking for a problem here. Are you not? I think you are. I think you know. I think he did that on purpose. I really believe that. And now the and of course the ex-wife she lost her cool and she's the one who's in trouble now. She was doing nothing but she was at home. She answered the door. It's him and his girl, and she lost her cool. Should she have not lost her cool? Obviously, she shouldn't have lost her cool, but it's a very emotional thing. If you've never been divorced, it can be very emotional. 
It can be very tough. And it got the better of her, and a lapse in judgment now has her being held on $30,000 bond. So in Egypt, this uh, bus driver uh, had to do a urine test, drug test. And uh, he submitted a urine sample, and then uh, they tested it, came back, called him in an office, and said, this, this is your urine. He was like, yes, sir. And they said, well, you're pregnant. <laughs> he used his wife's urine. To pass off as his own, as it turns out, she was pregnant. He didn't know it, and now the situation. Not not only is he, you know, now now he's a liar. Now he's dishonest. Now they don't believe him. And drug use in Egypt among uh, transportation drivers is part of a problem. Twelve thousand people are killed on Egypt's roads every year, and drug use is on the rise. Uh, they say drugs are very common now. And I never heard that before, that there's a drug problem in Egypt. I mean, I know drugs are everywhere, but it, apparently it's like a real deal. And now the transportation authority is also going to require a blood test. So now when you're tested and you're tested randomly, understand that Egypt has different laws. They do things different. You could be walking down the street and they could say, give me a drug sample. I need a drug sample right now. You got to pee in a cup. That's how they do things, I guess. But now, in addition to a urine sample, you also got to give a blood so they can they can match it so they don't have to go through this anymore. But this guy, I mean, what are the odds, you know, that he just, he just, I mean, he's trying to beat the system, right? For whatever reason. And maybe he wasn't on drugs. He just didn't want to give up his own urine for whatever reason. And so he decides to have his, use his wife's urine. And she happens to be at the same time, she's pregnant. And you didn't even know she was pregnant. Obviously he didn't know because if he didn't know, he'd be really stupid if he submitted her urine anyway, knowing she's pregnant. But that's how they found out. And he's busted. And now he looks not only dishonest. He looks like a fool. So now he's in a lot of trouble. Hey, let me ask you, do you ever like look in your toilet like before you sit down or do you look, do you ever look in the toilet ever? Cause this woman in Thailand was taking a shower and she gets out of the shower and this snake <laughs> like rose up from the toilet bowl and sank uh, their fangs in her right hand and tried to drag her down the drain. She fought it off with a broom that was in the bathroom and she screamed for her daughter to come help her to pry the python's head off of her hand. And the, and the, and the snake, you know, the python let go and went back down the toilet. She had to have 20 stitches and the snake is still on the loose. I don't care what anybody says. If I'm that, if I'm that woman, I'm not ever going in that bathroom again. We got to move. <laughs> we got to move. I had always heard that that was like a that was like a myth. A snake crawling through the sewer line and then coming up through the toilet and snatching you. You know, in this case, it bit her on the hand. It was trying to snatch her back into the toilet. What the hell is that? <laughs> what what is that about? Whew, that's crazy. I've got to move. I can't live there anymore. I don't do I why would you want to live there anymore? You know? And I gotta order if I'm a woman, I gotta order one of those things you go order line where you can pee standing up. I and I'm never well, you gotta sit down to poop, I guess, but that, that's crazy. That is bananas. How do you <laughs> how do you get over the trauma of a snake trying to drag you back into the toilet? <laughs> that, that's wow. I would freak the hell out. I saw this article on blackmediascoop.com, 25 things black women should know how to cook per guys, per, per black man. So you should know how, ladies, this is what you should do. You should, this, you should know how to do this. You should know how to prepare this. All right, you ready for the list? Uh, let's see. I'll go from 25 and work my way down on number one. Number 25, oven baked, an oven baked barbecue dish. You should know how to make an oven baked, bar you should know how to barbecue ribs in an oven or chicken or whatever in an oven, not on a grill, in an oven, just in case it's too cold to go outside and grill. Although here in St. Louis, people have been known to go out on their grill and, uh, and get their barbecue on when it's like 20 degrees outside. Ladies, uh, fellas say you should also be able to make a sauce from scratch, whether it's a barbecue sauce or tartar sauce. You should be able to do that. Black women, your man says you should be able to make banana pudding. You should be able to break down a whole chicken or turkey. You should be able, ladies, to be able to make salmon croquettes. <laughs> if a woman put a salmon croquette in front of me, I would throw it at her. <laughs> I hate, I don't like salmon. I've tried salmon. 
you know, and my wife, I think there's some salmon in the freezer right now that I'm probably going to have to eat because, you know, I'm out of a job. So we're on a budget. So whatever's in there, we eating. So, you know, but I do not like salmon. I don't. And people have told me, well, it's how you prepare it. I've had salmon so many different ways. I just don't like it. I don't like you never had my salmon. And you know what, Putin? I never will. Ladies, fellas say you should know how to make a burger. Anybody should know how to make a good burger, though, right? You should know how to make, and ladies, you should any ethnic dish outside of an African American dish. Can you curry a chicken? Can you make a mean enchilada? How is your sauerkraut? Is it good? Can you make homemade lasagna? That's another thing. Number 18 on the list is lasagna. Ladies and fellas say you should also know how to make chicken salad. I don't like chicken. I don't like chicken. I know you think I'm crazy, right? I don't really care for chicken. Here's my issue. I like beef. I like red meat. I know it's unhealthy for me, and it's probably more expensive, and I'm not eating it as much, but I love beef. Uh, ladies, you should know how to make some kind of go-to dessert. You know, homemade. You know, where you have to measure, mix, and bake, and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, you should know how to make pancakes or waffles. Ladies, number 14 on the list of what you should know how to cook according to guys, crab legs. You should know how to steam some crab legs or, or barbecue them. Or boy, what do you do? I don't, I don't like, I'm, I'm, I'm quirky as hell. I don't like crab. I'm not eating. I don't eat crab. I don't like crab legs. I, that's too much work to be cracking and that little fork and digging. I ain't doing all that for no damn crab. I'm not doing that for a meal. I'm paying you twenty four ninety five, and you're going to bring me some something that I have to crack and pick at with a fork. No, I'm not doing that. You should be able to clean shrimp, <laughs> ladies. Now understand this list. Uh, under this is this, you know, because you ladies can come up with their own list. So this is what a man should be able to do. And I get that. That's fine. You're entitled to do that. I'm just reading you what it says right here. Ladies should be able to make greens or cabbage. I don't like greens. <laughs> I don't taste like boiled grass. I just don't like it. Now Thanksgiving, my wife makes a she makes a pile of food. And one thing she makes for her and her mom are greens. She makes greens for her and her mother. My, my, I don't eat them. My kids don't eat them. But they eat the hell out of them. You should be able to make beef stew. My wife makes a great beef stew. These are things that women should know how to make. According to men, you should know how to fry chicken or fish. Number nine, you should also be able to make a decent taco. Number eight, you should be able to make cornbread. Not the jiffy stuff, but cornbread. Real cornbread. Can you make hot water cornbread? Y'all know what hot water cornbread is? You gonna eat your cornbread? <laughs> Number seven, ladies, you should be able to make spaghetti and meatballs. I don't like, I don't like, I don't really don't care for Italian food. I don't, you know? And pizza, I like frozen pizza out the grocery store better than I like any 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 uh pizza place pizza joint I just like I like frozen pizza I don't know why call me crazy number six ladies this is according 25 things black women should know how to cook according to the fellas you should know how to make homemade chicken soup my wife makes a great chicken soup too she does she does number five on the list good fluffy grits eggs and or rice all right I don't really care for breakfast food I don't eat eggs, scrambled eggs, sunny side up, anything. I don't, I don't like eggs. I do not like eggs. Well, I was on this diet. I had higher nutrition. It's because I had like this stomach pain for, I don't know, man, at least two years. And I went to specialists and they ran a camera up my privates and all this stuff, trying to find what was wrong. And I, I went and saw a per friend of mine, an ex coworker who says you should see a nutritionist. And I did. And the pain was gone in two weeks, three weeks. It was gone. And But one of the diet things, one of the, the food things I was eating was eggs. And I don't like eggs. But I ate them. And when the pain went away, I quit eating the eggs. I just, I don't, I don't like eggs. Grits, I'm not a fan of. Rice, eh, not for breakfast. But I understand it's a thing. 25 things black women should know how to cook. Number four, smother chicken. Smother chicken. 
You should know how to make some other chicken. Number three, a good steak. You want to keep a man happy, know how to make a good steak if he's into red meat. Some men don't eat red meat, and some men don't eat hardly any red meat. But a good steak, you can't beat that with a stick. Uh, number two, you should be able to make homemade meatloaf with mashed potatoes and gravy. Not the kind you go to the grocery store and you buy it already, the everything prepared. All you got to do is, you know, stick it in the oven and get it hot. No, 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 no. You got to be able to make homemade meatloaf with mashed potatoes and gravy. And the number one thing, according to a single black male's website, the number one thing every black woman should know how to cook is homemade mac and cheese. Not the craft in the box kind, you know, not the runny stuff. You know, homemade. The kind where you almost you need like an ice cream scoop to get it out. You know what I'm saying? One of those <laughs> kinds of things. I, I, I've been fiending for my wife's macaroni and cheese. I haven't told her. Because uh, my wife has this thing about just any time I want something, she, she, she like feels, if I'm fiending for a certain kind of food, it's like her mission to make it. And I just think that's silly. <laughs> I just think, because a lot of the stuff that I like, it takes a while to prepare. And she just makes it, she'll clear her schedule. That's how great of a wife I have. But it's like, nah, it's not that serious, man. But I know that we'll be having it for Thanksgiving. That may be all we'll have for Thanksgiving <laughs> is mac and cheese. But I'm looking forward to that because I can really do some damage with all her mac and cheese. But those are 25 things black women should know how to cook according to guys. Now I got hungry looking at all this. I got hungry looking at all. You know what was on there? Uh, what was not on the list is uh, potato salad. Right? I don't eat anybody's potato salad. And uh, muscacholi. Muscacholi is a thing in St. Louis. I don't know why. <laughs> but it is a thing. I don't know why. I can't stand muscacholi. I don't care for Italian food, though. But that muscacholi thing, nah. 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 I don't think so. So I told you a while back that Stevie Wonder had a child last year and was going to have triplets this year. But as it turns out, that's not true at all. He is having a baby with his girlfriend, uh, Tamika, Tamika Robin Bracey. But they're having one child. <laughs> they're not having three. They're having his eighth child. And his children right now are ages 1 to 39. <laughs> Steve has been making babies for 40 years, man. 40 years he's been making babies. Wow, Stevie, stop. <laughs> stop. Did you know there's a movement? They're not a movement, but you know there's a group of people who believe that Stevie Wonder is not blind at all. That he can see, maybe not see as clearly as you and I, but he can see like maybe shapes, things like that. I've known, I, I've known people who have worked for Stevie Wonder. I know people who know Stevie Wonder very personally. And, and I don't mean that in a sexual way. They're just friends, good friends with him. And they say he, he's completely and totally blind. But there's a, you know, the same people. People say Tupac's still alive. People believe Elvis was still alive. But that's not the case. Not the case at all. Uh, Sherry Shepard then got her a new gig. She is going to be the newest cast member of The Soul Man, Cedric the Entertainer Show. She's going to finish her stint on Cinder, doing Cinderella on Broadway with Kiki Palmer. And uh, then she's going to start doing the, the Soul Man. So congratulations. Niecy Nash is on the show. Uh, congratulations. Whoa, I'm at 30 minutes. I got to go. That's it. That's all. I, I'm going to wrap it up right here, man. I don't want to take up your whole day. I'm just saying. We're going to leave it right here. I appreciate you so much for listening. Look, I've got other shows that I do. Uh, in video form that you can watch on YouTube. One of them is called Men on Scandal that I do with Mark Clark and Troy Johnson. Uh, and we recap every episode of Scandal from a male perspective. And we have a ball doing it. And we've been retweeted by Shonda Rhimes. And, you know, uh, we just enjoy doing the show. And if you want to watch it, you can. If you want to listen to it, you can. They're both on YouTube. You know, you can just put audio only on YouTube. And that's where we have the uh, audio podcast. Also, it's also on Spreaker and uh, I believe iHeartRadio. But you can uh, watch us do it uh, by going to YouTube and just uh, searching uh, This and That Media. Or you can 
search Tony Scott. You can search Men on Scandal, but you know, tell them what's going to come up first. Hopefully, we are, but it's there. Also, we do a show called Men on Everything, where we talk about stuff in the news, pop culture stuff, serious stuff, uh, sports. We talk about our lives. Talk about it. It's called Men on Everything, and you can enjoy that also. It's also on the same YouTube channel. And I also have a show called I, Tony Tech, which is tech news, but in a very simple form. It's not anything that has to do with motherboards on computers or you know how to build a computer nothing like that just simple tech news about techie things all right your head's not going to explode and it's not long it's like three minutes if you can check that out too that would be very nice but i i do i appreciate you so much man you, you're so good to me and uh, thank you so much for listening to this and i will talk to you tomorrow all right have a good one